Right, this video is all about boxing defense. Three ways we can defend punches. Using footwork, using your gloves to block the punches, using your head movement to avoid those punches. In this video, we're gonna break everything down, show you how to pull it off on the mitt. Hey, my name's Glenn Holmes. If you're new to this channel, I've taught thousands of people worldwide how to box and how to coach boxing for fitness. On this channel, you're gonna get plenty of videos about mitt work, boxing combinations, how to break it down, how to work in your boxing fitness sessions, technique, all of that good stuff. Make sure you hit subscribe to get notified of the new videos each week. So the first way we can defend boxing punches, in my opinion, it's the best way to defend boxing punches. I'm gonna explain why in a second, is footwork. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw some basic punches, the jab and the cross. Let's take those two, the most fundamental punches in boxing, the jab and the cross. And all, all we're gonna do, the boxer's just gonna stay slightly in range to start. So I'm gonna throw the one, two where they would be, they would actually hit them if I was to land those punches, right? So make sure you're in range to start so they can actually you can actually touch the glove. So measure the range first and when I throw that one two I'm just gonna tell my boxer to just take simply just take a step back it's gonna be the as an orthodox boxer you'd be taking a step back with the back foot first right so as she sees my punches coming in boom boom simple as that just a simple step back now if we want to make it a little bit more dynamic we're on the toes we're moving a little bit so a little bit of bouncing the feet and then as soon as I come in just reacting with the feet again Good, and I'm actually taking a step in as well and still falling short right there. So right, come closer. So right here I can hit her, I can, I'm in range, then we're moving, boom, boom, stepping back, okay? So that's one way we can drill just the reactions in the feet. As soon as you see the punches, to react with the feet, right? The second one we're gonna work on is the pivot. So this actually changes the angle. So for example, if I'm coming in with or without punches, if I'm just generally attacking my opponent, we can work on that pivot. So I just come away from the ropes a little bit. So you're gonna do like right there, yeah. And then what we're gonna do here is gonna keep that front foot set. She's gonna spin on the front foot and just pivot the back foot out. So I'm starting out of range. My goal right here would be to come and attack and push them back, right? So a couple of things you can do here. She can pivot straight away as soon as I start to advance, right? And she's in control. Now I'm off balance, I've, I've fallen short. She's in a position to land punches right there. Or you can take that step back that we just worked on first. As soon as she sees me attack, you can take the step back to create the room and then just use the pivot to change the angle. So we're right here, she steps back. As I keep coming, then she can pivot out and work from there as well. So just a couple of simple drills there. As soon as you start to throw the punches as the coach, your box is automatically going to react with the feet. So it can be the step back, it can be the pivot, or it can be the step back and then the pivot, right? So Rule number one right here is just using footwork for defense. As soon as you see that attack or those punches coming in, reacting with the feet to create the space and making sure your boxer falls short. Reason why I think footwork is number one for defense and you watch a lot of amateur boxers, they're always on the toes. They've always got the feet moving. Whether they're going backwards or forwards, they're always in a position and on balance to keep they're keeping those feet alive. They're never static like this. And if you look at the last uh, Alexander Usyk fight against Anthony Joshua, the reason he was so effective he was just constantly moving those feet, changing the angles, moving forwards, moving backwards. His feet just didn't stop the whole fight. And that's really hard to time your punches against that because your opponent's constantly moving and in different positions. Lomachenko, another uh, same Ukrainian, another great example of just keeping those feet moving the entire fight. It's so hard to defend against, it's so hard to attack against as well. So always my personal preference for defense is footwork. It's always the most effective. All right, so the second way we can defend punches is by using the gloves and blocking and catching parrying punches, right? When would we typically need to do that in a fight? Well, usually you'll see that kind of early on when boxers are trying to figure out that range, right? So the first round or two of a fight, they'll kind of step, kind of feeling that range out. So if I'm right here, I would be able to land that jab, right? So rather than just simply using footwork straight away, you want to, you want to try and find the range yourself when you're defending. So you kind of allow that jab to travel and we're gonna use the back glove, the right glove, orthodox v orthodox, to just parry and deflect that punch. So as I throw the jab, I'm, try, I'm, I'm making sure I'm throwing it as the coach from a, in range, so I would actually be able to hit her. And then she's just gonna use that back glove to just kind of parry it and knock it down. Now a couple of things to the technique on the parry. You wanna make sure the fist is nice and tight so it, the, the, the punch doesn't slide through. So make sure that fist nice and tight, sit into your legs a little bit. As the jab comes in, just parrying it. Now notice how the glove's not coming too far away from her face. She's allowing that jab to travel right up to where the glove is and just meeting it at the last minute. What, one thing you want to avoid with this parry is bringing the glove away from your chin. So as soon as she sees this coming, meet the punch. She's not bringing the glove all the way out here to meet the mitt, right? 
The reason we don't want to do that is she's exposed immediately. So then all I would have to do is just faint that and then I can come around the side. So always keeping the gloves in and around the head area, right? When you're blocking these punches. So this is the most basic way to defend uh, the jab is just using that right glove and just parrying it off. Boom, parry it. Think about trying to knock it away and deflecting it a little bit. There, boom, knock it away. Boom, boom. There you go. So now she's got a bit more force behind it. It's actually pulling my punch down as well, which creates an opening for you as well as the boxer. So that's the most basic way to defend a punch is just, with the gloves is just using that parry. Another way we can defend the punches as well is just by, by blocking. So if you go into a high guard, get your gloves up nice and high, try and keep those elbows down. If we're defending uh, punches coming around the side, hooks and rear hooks, looping punches, etc. We're looking to catch them on the back of the gloves right here. Now this requires a nice tight fist and a tight arm and the core as well. And just to drill this, I'm just gonna throw simple hooks either side and she's just gonna catch them on the back of the gloves right there. Now a couple of things on this, in, in a real boxing setting, you'd be told to keep those gloves glued to the head like this, keep it tight so you're creating a cushion for those punches coming in. In boxing fitness settings, most people don't want to absorb that uh, impact and create that rattle in the head. And it can be kind of intimidating for general population if you're just training clients and stuff. So what I like to do with this is keep the gloves slightly off the head. In real boxing, you will be told not to do that because it could knock the glove onto the head. But in boxing fitness, we're not trying to recreate that level of intensity. We're just trying to train those reactions, okay? So for, for that, I'm just gonna, she's gonna keep the gloves off the head and she's just gonna absorb the punches. And I'm gonna pull the power a little bit as the coach and just kind of touch the back of the gloves and just work on those defensive reactions, okay? So that's how we can uh, catch and block punches, basically. Now let's see how we can put that into a combination. So if I was to throw a one-two, she's gonna block the jab with the back glove. She's gonna parry the, the right hand with the front glove. And if I was to follow that up with a hook, just block it with the back of the glove right there. So a standard three punch combination from me as the coach, just a one, two hook, and boxer's just gonna parry, parry, block, okay? So it's just nice, simple, short movement. Parry with the, the back hand, parry with the front hand, and then just block and kind of turn away from the punch a little bit. So one, turn into the punch a little bit. So boom, 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 good. There's a little bit more rotation through your body when you block the shots. That's it, good, and again, boom, boom, boom. Now a common mistake we see a lot with that block is the elbow coming away from the body a lot. So we've catch, catch, and then block. And you see that elbow lifting, it's leaving that body wide open. So we wanna try and concentrate on keeping the elbow down and just sitting into the legs a little bit to make sure that whole side of the, the upper body is covered with the elbow and the glove, okay? So again, just one, two, block, good. And again, catch, catch, block, parry, parry, block. There you go. All right, so just a real basic way and a basic example of how we can start to get our clients, our, our beginner boxers, our boxers that don't have as much experience, used to catching punches and seeing them come in out their face and being comfortable. That's the whole point with defense here as well, is being comfortable. Punches are coming. We don't want to be shying away and turning away from the punches. We want to be comfortable and relying on reactions and defending those punches with the gloves. So just some examples there of how you can start to use the gloves for defense, okay? All right, so number three. Before we get to this one, I just want to remind you to subscribe to the channel. That way you're going to get notified of the new videos each week. The third one is head movement. Now, we all love a good slick boxer who's just slipping punches and rolling out the way and using their upper body and can kind of basically stay in the same spot and slip and avoid like 10 punches. You see Tyson Fury doing this recently, such a slick boxer. Um, Sweet Pea Pernell Whitaker, absolute legend of, of head movement. I'm just going to give you a couple of examples how I can start to drill that and work on that as well. Now, the key with this, if you're a coach watching this, this is when you're uh, getting your boxer to work on head movement and rolling punches and actually avoiding shots, make sure your punches are accurate. That's the whole key right here. So if you want to stand right here in the line of the camera, I'm going to show you an example of what you see a lot of that doesn't really do the boxers any favor or doesn't really teach them how to slip and, and use the head, head movement. Coaches will tend to do this and go across their boxer and go above the boxer like this, right? That if she didn't move at all, you know, there's no point to that, right? So make sure we're being accurate. So just jump back in. And what you can do for that is you can use a line on the ground. If you draw a line on the ground, imagine you've got one foot either side of that line, and you can just use that line as a guide for yourself, right? So you can throw your punches straight down the line, and then when you're throwing your hook, just make sure it's at head height, so your box has actually got to get underneath the shots. 
All right, so working on the slips, for straight punches, typically we're gonna be slipping those straight punches. So the jab and the cross, just, just a little roll of that front shoulder to slip the jab and just kind of loading up the right leg a little bit. Slight weight shift, 60% to that back foot and a little bit of about 40% on that front foot. So she's turned the shoulder in, core is engaged and allowing that jab to go right over the shoulder, right? Keeping the chin tucked and the eyes on the target for any counter punches or any punches coming after that. So from there, if I was to throw the right hand, she's gonna do exactly the same thing to the other side. There, turn that right shoulder in. Now we're loading up the front leg. And that line that I talked about on the ground is great because not only is it helping you as the coach to throw those punches straight, but it's training and teaching your boxer to get their head off of that line. That's the whole goal with these slips, is taking your head off that line. If there was a line coming right down here where the punches are coming, I'm getting off the line, I'm getting off the line. That's the key. And it comes down to the, that rotation of the shoulders and keeping that core engaged as well. So we're just gonna drill that a few times. We're gonna start with a couple of jabs. There, there, slip it. There, good, slip. Hands are up while she's slipping. Slip, slip, good. Now I'm not actually telling her when to slip. Again, I talked about this before and uh, a couple of minutes ago, it's, it's all about creating those reactions, right? And I'll, uh, making your boxer focus and concentrate on when you're moving your shoulders. So watch my shoulders, slip, slip, there, okay? Now we're gonna, we're gonna build it up a little bit. I'm gonna throw the one, two, and she's gonna slip twice. Slip, slip, good, again. Slip, slip, nice. Notice how I'm fully extending my punches, turning my hips. I'm using good form and technique to make it as realistic as possible. Slip, slip, good. A little quicker now, moving around. Good, and again, nice. One more, good. Now we're just gonna add in the roll. So we're going back to that one-two hook. We worked on this defending the one-two hook with the gloves. Now we're gonna work on defending the one-two hook just with head movement um, to avoid the punches altogether. So we've slipped the jab, we've slipped the cross, the weight's on the left side. The only punch I can really throw from here is something from my left side, typically it would be a hook. I'm gonna roll, get those legs down, round and up, make that U shape, get under the punch, okay? So just a slip, slip roll. So one, two, hook coming in and she's just gonna slip right, slip left, roll under the punch. Slip right, slip left, roll under the punch. Good, again, good, breathe when you slip. There, nice, good. So just a, another basic example right there of how we can use the head movement as well using the slips and the rolls. Okay, so just to recap, three ways we can defend punches. Footwork, using the gloves, and using the head movement as well to completely avoid the punches. Now, how do we, we, can we put those together? Of course we can. So how can we put it together, right? So we start with the footwork. If I came in with, say, a double jab, right? I wanna I push her back with a double jab. She can use the feet to get out of the way of the double jab. So you go two steps on that. So step, step, right? She made me fall short, but I still wanna to commit to that attack. I come in with that step and that right hand, she slipped it. And then from there, I wanna follow it up with a hook. She can block it with the glove. Boom, right? Just get your weight back to center when you block. So you've slipped and then boom, right there, okay? So I'm throwing a jab, jab, two hook. Four punch combination and she's using the footwork first to get out of the way of the double jab, but she's still not managed to fully get out of range. I'm following it over the two hook. She slipped the right hand and blocked the hook. So we've added, We've used the footwork, um, the head movement, and the gloves there to defend all of those punches. So let's put it together. So I'm coming forward, stepping, slipping, catching, yeah. And again, so I'm stepping in, slip the right, boom, block the hook. That's it, got it? Again, nice, good. All right, so there's just an example at the end of how you can start to put this stuff together. You get creative with your uh, defenses and, and your punches. But uh, yeah, hopefully that just gives you a little background and a little bit of a basic information on overall how we can defend. You're always gonna have three options when defending punches, your footwork, your hands and your gloves, and your head movement as well. And you can get creative on how you wanna put all that together. Sometimes you can just work purely on footwork to avoid punches. Sometimes you can just stand in place, block those shots. And then um, you can also work on mixing it up where you can slip, catch, and use your feet as well, all right? So hopefully that helps. If you like this video, leave me some comments, leave me some feedback. I'd love to hear what you think about it and ways that you drill boxing defense in your sessions as well. Thanks for watching.